Everyone knows the good old classic tale of Sonic.exe, right? Infamous copypasta turned creepypasta that was so bad it was shelved in the world of worst creepypastas ever and deleted off the face of the creepypasta wiki in and of itself, which in that later turned into a game which made other games, which made FNF popular as hell, and then rabbit hole swallowed not only by the game itself but other ones around it, and that's besides the point. I'm just here to talk about the original Sonic.exe fan game that was made by MY5T Crimson, okay, and anyone around 2012 would play it for a cheap buck in their pockets. Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to Let's Play Sonic.exe, yeah. Ah! Basically, the three main cast of Sonic 1 to Sonic 3 and Knuckles would get murdered by Ooh, Spooky Snake with blood eyes would kill everyone in his god. <laughs> that basic nonsense of a walking simulator. One interesting aspect, you fall down into f as Knuckles be sent into acid trip zone. Oh no. Aside from that, it has no gameplay value and skill whatsoever. It's basically just a gateway to push much better creepypastas like Sonic.exe PC port, Sonic EYX, and recently Sonic EXE one last round being the best interpretation of this game that I could think of. And then we got Roblox. The 2007 company started with good intentions that now looks like an offshoot of meta. What the hell is this? I mean, kids and adults alike make games, scripts, maps, and codes for all sorts of games, and eating sand simulator, art race featuring the backgrounds. Why am I, a fucking <coughs> idiot, talking about a 2000s dead creepypasta that lives in the lives of YouTube kids FNF Among Us Big Twerking Simulator, and a semi competent game no. maker studio using no. no money from kids' pockets? Well, what if we just grabbed our bowl and combined these two, and we get a bit of survival gameplay, just a pinch of that, and we finally mix together this thing. Sonic.exe The Disaster is a semi-platforming team-based survival game that has two teams, completely normal Sonic characters, and Sonic.exe himself, and later on his cronies, if they decide that the dude camping in the back of the map just wasn't fair. Oh, come on, man. And Somehow, this game is one of the most fun I've ever had on this stupid ass website. Nice throw! Huh? Don't get me wrong, we have games like Flee the Facility, Survive the Killer, and everyone's 2015 classic, Survive and Kill the Killers in Area 51, with Slenderman's distant cousin that needs to grow a couple of inches, PNG of a bleach man's face, a plushie of Sonic if he had ketchup spilled on him and was thrown around by a pit bull, and a man in a balaclava with a very long knife. All of those are classics by today's standards, but this game just tickles that itch of stupidity in terms of gameplay, also being serious and team-based goodness, which is strange. So please, sit down, enjoy yourself, let me take you on this quote-unquote journey, the journey of why Sonic.exe, the disaster, is a game. Play, as I have mentioned, is a team-based survival where up to six clowns of your choosing try to run away from a being that cannot be outran nor kill. It consists of six different maps. Hill, Hide and Seek, Axel, and Two. Dot dot dot, you know, fucking me. You can't run, kind and fair, which has the music you're probably listening to right now. Each map consists with springs, high and low inclines, some ramps, and half-life jank in the form of anti-camping spots to make you slide around like it was on oil. Each map within two out of the three game modes has things called red rings, which if you pick them up, do give a slight speed boost at the cost of a little bit of health, not knowing who's getting hurt, or anyone is with Rouge's trackers, everyone's health not being able to be seen, and causes your character to look like their eyes are about to shake out of their skull. And then you get all of the characters, which, even though I'll lead into a bit more detail later, all you need to know is that each can do one of three things. Heal stun damage, a sonic, a mobility tool, or healing a support tool. Yet, for better or for worse, Sonic, however, is not only faster than you, 
can hit you for 65 damage apiece, and once you are down once at 65 health or lower, he will instantly kill you. Each survivor, once down, has a state of crawling on the floor with their bodies bleeding out. You do not only really spam your spacebar to not bleed out to death faster than the 300 fake HP that you already have, but you must crawl around with WASD to find your teammates, which are marked in white. And while someone is downed, they are marked in red themselves. And no, Sonic players, you cannot camp bodies from being downed to let them bleed out. The downy will not take bleeding damage, if that is the case, camping. Rats. No, unacceptable. And not to mention, if you do in fact die at any point in the round that isn't towards the end, you have around 15 seconds to press the C key, which if you do, you'll get up back on Sonic's side and smack around the other remaining survivors. Each round lasts around 400 to 180 seconds, each depending on how many players are alive. Once the timer reaches around 80 seconds, a ring or exit will open up, followed by some kick-ass music that'll only shut when A, all survivors will escape, or the remaining ones, B, the timer reaches zero, or C, Sonic and Co. kill or down everyone else that is alive. Meaning, if your teammate is down while the 80 seconds are ticking, you have a moral choice of picking them back up at the cost of your team losing. No! You're the only one. Just, just leave your man. Help me! Just, Absolutely on, not! Man. Your team technically wins anyways. Aside from the gameplay basically boiling down to that, the maps themselves are also a point of contention. Each map has its own music, atmosphere, and layout. For instance, Hill, You Can't Run, and Hide and Seek Act 2 will often be more two floors associated, or more, while maps like Hide and Seek Act 1, Kind and Fair, only really have one or two positions where people group up and then get spooked by the blue brat. So, the gameplay is simple. Your survivor, stall out the clock till 80 seconds are left and book it to the ring and or exit. Your Sonic, do not let this happen until everyone before anyone gets to said ring or exit. And a tip to my survivors, if you see that Sonic EXE is just cooking with no oil and completely smacking the shit out of your team, you don't have to help them by pressing the C key. Then again, your choice. It is quite boring watching the game play with that game. Acceptable. The game boasts eight playable survivors, technically nine playable EXEs, but only six survivors can be chosen at a time. And each character is the best at each of their certain jobs, but only everyone can stay alive if the team uses each of their strengths to each other's weaknesses. The survivors can only have one character on their team per match, so if they fall, there is no replacement. So protect your cream, protect your knuckles, they are all valuable assets. Yet, some people fly off on the sidelines and do nothing to the team. Shadow. <coughs> I'm the Shadow, coolest. Running off and away from everyone is not the best idea unless the group is scattering. You will die faster. No cream, not being there to assist your teammates with health after them being hurt will detriment them. And no, Rouge, placing down sensors to only benefit yourself will not work. You will not live that long. Each person also has very slightly different hitboxes. Eggman's being the largest, and Cream's being the smallest. Now we finally get to deep dive into the characters, which I'll put a little bit more detail into. I'll round it off with Sonic.exe, because he has the most moves, of course. As an arm cannon and a stun move, Upper Glide is a mobility move. The arm cannon is ranged as a medium cooldown after use, and knock back tails at certain distance when used. Practice to your aim. Stay in the back and hit your shots from a safe distance, because hitting that little brat within a close range will often not work. character has a punch and block. Punch is much more harder to hit, but also more valuable than a block. This will stun Sonic.exe for a good while and keeps everyone a decent distance away from him. 
blocking with an eye hit from Sonic EXE and making both you and him take a bit of knockback. Yet, this will put you into a crawl and has a small window to hit. Around two seconds. Use the block wisely. I'm gonna smack the goofy out you. What? 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 Egghead has a single stun move and one mobility move, shock and jetpack boost. Honestly, a shock is probably one of the best moves inside of the game. It's not only an AoE move that will sometimes stop Sonic from gaining distance entirely as long as you stay there, the AoE will be ping dependent. The same stupid hitbox as Sonic Daddy XE can conjure up from his pentagram, it just happened to him. His jetpack is okay. Good for doing one skip on You Can't Run, but aside from that, it's just kind of mild. <laughs> one of the two characters boasting three moves which is only unlocked once you throw your hammer, is both Hammer Hit and the Hammer Throw itself. Both hammer moves are used to stun Sonic, a melee, and a projectile all in one. Yet, once you throw the hammer, even if it hits, you must go back and pick it up. This is where the roll comes in, her only mobility move. Honestly, I just... I'll, I'll be frank with you. I have two characters I don't like, and this is certainly one of them. I just would rather play Knuckles or Tails. But to all you Amy mains out there, double hitting that bitch just to make sure that you get hit one second less than the rest. Yeah, sure, keep going, pal, you're fine. You're asking for it! Our little running rabbit is the only support move that heals in a mobility move, heal and speed boost. Both of these are fairly explainable by today's standards. Heal heals you for 25 HP, but not herself, meaning she is the only person that cannot gain heals, and speed boost is speed boost, running fairly faster than Sonic himself. Get Yet, off this here. makes her the most valuable and targeted class in the entire game. Because they can have the entire other side of survivors last a lot longer than what is needed. Trust me, if you play this character, you will get chased down to the ends of the earth. This is the second and only other character that has three moves, shielding herself, shielding an ally, and rolling. Shielding gives Sally 300 fake HP that cannot knock down her actual HP, and giving the shield halves this health. Sally uses it, either when completely drained or hit by Sonic EXE or by a minion, she'll gain a speed boost for four to three seconds. Honestly, this character is about as valuable as Cream in terms of team synergy, and rolling is rolling, what do you expect? FUCK! Shadow! I don't like Shadow. At all. He's a fan favorite due to his ability to run away like a sissy varying character I see. Boasting Knuckles' block ability and his own dash movement tool, he'll dash towards whatever he sees in front of him like Bye, the Neos Emeralds are in danger and he has a good look to stench, granting him iframe and short flight in that direction. And trust me, don't get me wrong, he can be used as a team player very extremely well, especially with his dash. 
he's just a solo survival Don't character, me. mainly Don't in a turn of gameplay in teams. It just he'll be the second target at that rate because of just how annoying he is, and he'll probably be the only solo survivor. character with the support move sensor her movement tool slide. Her sensors will be outlined to her and only her on the map. There's a max of eight she can put down at a time. Putting them in hot spots will not only reveal information to the survivors on where you and each other are, but will also reveal Sonic's location for approximately 10 seconds. Within this 10 seconds, the added benefit that if Sonic goes invisible to find where people are, he cannot find Rouge at all until the effect wears off, including his little cronies, meaning that if you're an EXE yourself after you've died, no, Rouge is still hidden from everyone. It's completely stupid. Before we end this off, Knuckles, Shadow, and Eggman have the Nerves of Steel passive, the only passive in the entire game. This passive allows Sonic.exe to not grab the three of them at all and will put them inside of a down state. Then afterwards, they have to spam the R key like the space bar, except twice as fast, and you still can lead out, but it's just slightly harder. Fun fact, while looking up footage and uh, some information for this, on the Wikipedia it says that Cream had her own passive that allowed anyone she picked up was down to gain 10 more health when picked up, meaning instead of like the normal 35 you get if they're just freshly picked up, they'll get 45, which doesn't really matter much, because this was removed and replaced Glide with a simple heal mechanic, which kind of makes sense. Bloody Edgy Rat has five moves. It can hit you for 65 damage, grab you and pummel you to death for a certain amount of hits, or if you have nerves of steel, just down you and force you to play the fucking dash in the game. He can turn invisible for about 20 seconds, and he can summon up to three clones that are just... They're useful, but they're stupid as shit. If people know that you have a clone, it's more often than not just better to get out of the end of state because you can already track people. You can just smack them that way. But I have been fooled, and I have fooled plenty of people using the clone. Shame, though, that these things disappear either after a certain amount of time has passed, or either tail smacks you, knuckles hits you, Amy hits you, Eggman decides to give you a nice electrical bath, where you decide to trip over a rock in your own shoe, and they'll all disappear right after the stun animation. It's dumb, but it makes sense in gameplay-wise. I do think it's a good good choice. And finally, he can press the Q key to laugh. That's it. No debuffs or buffs when laughing. It is just a taunt. And come on, don't tell me if you are Sonic.exe taunting your victims, you wouldn't press the Q key just to have a little bit of gloating to yourself. That's what the character is all about, after all. If you aren't, well then, I don't think you're playing the character right. It's just objective fact. You're playing the character wrong. Leave. Doors that way. You know, I'll be honest. When I was making this video, I never expected to be enjoying myself in this game much. And this is coming from a person who's oddly played a lot of competitive Undertale games, which all suck ass. But it's great. It is a refreshing taste of breath air in my lungs that I can finally get to do something that, while is competitive, is also more team-based and more rewarding for those who play it for a long period of time. And who really would have thought that the edgy, leading cliché Sonic creepypasta that went from respected in remakes and fan interpretations to lead to one of the best Sonic-related video games I've played in the past few years? Fan games are cool. Did you pray? Did you pray to it? I can get down on some gas shit. And I know there's already the roleplay variant as well as the pure survival based one. 
both that I have respectively put a small amount of time in compared to the rest. And I also know about the 2D fan release that actually recently got fully released at the time of me making the script. Future me, did you play it? Yes? No? Anyways, I will honestly put this up as one for the books of games of all time. And I hope that eventually, with time and effort, more games of this similar concept will be introduced to even more people. The reason why I'm making this video, of course. And, you know, good on you, Sonic.exe, the disaster. Used to use revival and gameplay that is a nice cut of Ice Cap Water. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense.